This morning to the book of Exodus, book of Exodus chapter number three, between songs today and, and uh, prayer today and various things, I, I, think, I think a person or two nearly, nearly preached my sermon for me today, but uh, Exodus chapter number, number 12, that's where we're going to start. Uh, we'll go to a few places, but we will mainly focus on this chapter, just a few verses today. Uh, as we talk about this subject, there is power in the blood. Amen. So this is not a, uh, just a feel-good message. Uh, it's not just something, I believe it's a message from God to the church today. Amen. To the church, as well as to the unchurched. That there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Today's message really is about the power of Christ's blood to set you free, make you free, and keep you free. Did, did anybody besides Alan get that? Not only to set you free, how many of you are saved today? Not only to set you free, but to keep you free. His blood is able to do that. Amen. I'm amazed. Sometimes uh, I really could go back years. I'm amazed sometimes as I've looked at individuals and not in an aspect of judging them, but except to look at certain individuals that have come to me various times for various reasons that really seem to not have a lot of confidence in their salvation. Not a lot of confidence in the fact that they are born again believers. Not a lot of confidence in the fact that when Jesus Christ forgave them, he didn't change his mind a couple of years later. When he set you free, he set you free and he meant for you to stay free. Is anybody with me this morning in this place? Amen. Amen. I, but I, I'm really amazed at that some people seem to feel and to express that their salvation is fragile. I've come to tell somebody today in this place and somebody watching that your salvation is not fragile at all. Your salvation is built upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ, the blood he shed for you so that you could be forgiven forever and ever. But sometimes people have these feelings like, like I'm not real sure if I'm, I'm not real sure if I'm still saved. And those feelings sometimes come from influences uh, and influencers in our lives, sometimes all the way back to the early stages of our lives. It could be a mom or dad that that really did not believe strongly in the power of the blood. It could even be, y'all stay with me for just a second, it could even be a preacher that would preach some very dogmatic uh, message saying, for instance, that you've got to be perfect all the time. You've got to dress right. You've got to... You've got to have your hair just right. Or you're not going to make heaven. I had a young lady came to me. She, I say young lady. She was probably 25 at the time. Came to me one day and she said, I, I was at a church the other day. I'd known her from many years ago. Uh, she came to me though. She said, I need to talk to you, Pastor. And she said, I, I've been, uh, I, I attended this church and I walked in and I had I had earrings on and I was told I had to take them off. Any of y'all have earrings on? I, I'm just kind of looking around. I see some of you pulling your hair around there right now. But here again, sometimes due to influences, we feel like that our salvation is fragile 
and that God can't really take care of the things in our lives. I want you to know today that God can take care of every single thing in your life. Amen. Amen. But here again, if you've been under an influence like that, I want you to know that your salvation, you were bought with a price. It was the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He, he didn't give his life and take the torture in his body and all the things that happened to him on Calvary. He didn't do all of those things so that just some little something could pluck you out of his hands. It is a sure thing. When you get saved, you are born again. You are a child of God. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not. Amen. Give God praise this morning in this place. Amen. But there are, there's so many people that, that teach you that you have to be perfect in order to make heaven. Amen. Now on the surface, there is, there is definitely, there is certainly truth to that statement. Where they miss it, though, is not knowing that the perfection necessary for salvation is not found in your works. Amen. But rather through the blood. If you believe that works can get you to heaven, you are going to live a very, very sad life. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power in the blood today. Amen. Amen. I want to shift gears for just a moment. And I I want to make it clear that we should always live right and do right. Here again, please don't misunderstand. We should walk in love toward others. We should walk in grace toward others. We should give others mercy. That's a good place to say amen right there. But all all the works that we could do in life, those works will never be the thing responsible for getting you to heaven. Sure, we do those things, but those things are not what is going to get us to heaven. Amen? They will not, please understand this, they will not secure your your salvation. Works will not secure. It is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 There are people... I I know this. I run into them quite frequently. There are people and maybe watching right now even who who God tugs on their hearts in life and they go through life saying, I know I need to get saved. I know I need to accept Christ as Lord and Savior in my life. I know I need Him to forgive my sin. But before I do that, I'm really, I've got to get a few things right. I've, I've got to straighten out some things in my life first. I'd like to give you a little bit of wisdom today. You may or may not ever change some of those things that you know not, that God's not pleased with in your life. You may or may not ever be able to do that on your own. If you can do it on your own, I'm happy for you and whatever. And when you accomplish that in your life for yourself, I hope that God is still pulling on your heartstrings. Just let that sink in for just a second. But if you don't fix it, and if you don't quit it, I will tell you for a fact today that you can surely split hell wide open trying to do it by yourself. Or you can accept Jesus Christ into your life. You can come to him and ask him to forgive you. You can let him set you free. I don't know how how long it's going to take for certain few things to happen in your life, but I will tell you, you can do it with Jesus Christ and you can make it to heaven one day. Go ahead, give him a bigger praise than that if you would. Through the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. What an incredible chance to take to think that we could do it on our own. I'm going to wait till I can do it on my own. Jesus Christ is the only one to forgive your sin. Even if you fix some of the things in your life, He is still the only one that can forgive you. Oh, somebody help me today if you would. Amen. Now let's talk about power in the blood. I think uh, I heard a while ago somebody was going to preach on that, so I'm waiting for somebody to do that. Amen. Let me say something else. I do believe, I definitely believe that you can backslide. It's a choice. 
Amen? So I want to make that clear. I do believe that you can, you can jeopardize your salvation if you choose to turn from God. Amen? It's a very, very risky thing if you go through life and you're playing around with sin, thinking that you can live your life the way you want to live it as long as I shook the preacher's hand or I knelt at an altar or I shed a tear. It's a very, very risky thing. It is a dangerous road. I'm talking to somebody this morning. It is a dangerous road to think you can live like live life like you want to live it just because you made a profession of faith. We need God to touch us. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 25 says this, of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace. Are y'all with me today? I share that because it's truth, but on the other hand, I'm trying to help you understand that the blood is incredibly powerful. It is infinitely powerful. When you live your life as a man or a woman of God, you should never fear that some little thing one day would keep you out of heaven. It would be like thinking that right before the rapture takes place, St. Peter, he's ready. Rapture's fixing to happen and, and, and you smash your thumb with a, finger, with a, with a hammer And you say a word you shouldn't have said. And St. Peter goes, oh, man, he was that close. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. When you are saved, you are saved. Amen. You may mess up. I may mess up. But I'll tell you for a fact, we're still on our way to heaven because we ask forgiveness and we go on with Jesus. Give him praise again this morning, if you would. Go to Exodus chapter 12 and verse number 12. We studied this recently in our Wednesday evening Bible studies. It's a very rich, uh, incredible passage of Scripture uh, talking about the Passover. And I know most of us know uh, something at least about the Passover. But in verse number 12, Scripture says, For I will pass through, talking about the Lord, He says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute what? I will execute judgment. He says, I am the Lord. Now, remember this with me uh, as we go back and we kind of go through some of this this morning. It was the blood that removed Israel's judgment. Judgment was coming to the land, but it was the blood that removed Israel's judgment. It was judgment day in Egypt. It was announced and it struck suddenly at midnight. It was, it was a horrific time for those who were not covered by the blood. They, people were to be ready. They were to be prepared. Some were ready, obviously, and some were not. The result was death and cries everywhere. Incredible night. The key point, obviously, obviously, though, being that it was the blood that secured the children of Israel. It was the blood that removed Israel's judgment, but not from the Egyptians. We read later in verse number 30, so Pharaoh rose in the night, he and all his servants. Now we all, we remember that the blood was on the doorpost and on the lintel. It says, so Pharaoh rose in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Talking about Man and animal. There was not a single house. Yet in the, that same hour, not a single Israelite was touched. I'm telling you, there's power in the blood today. Amen. Amen. 
everyone was saved. I've, t- I've come to tell you again, there is power in the blood. I'm telling you, when you're under the blood, there's power in that, amen? When you're under the blood, no enemy can get you. No devil in hell can attack you. When you are under the blood, you are covered by that blood. Give him praise again if you would. Consider this if you would. The destroyer that was coming that night, the destroyer discriminated. Are y'all with me? Those that did not have the blood on the doorpost and on the lintel, those that did not have the blood, their firstborn were destroyed. They were destroyed. The Israelites with the blood, they were saved from all destruction. Are you glad you're under the blood today? Amen. Amen. Similarly today, those of us that are under the blood of Jesus Christ, we are saved and we have promises today that non-believers don't have. I'm glad I'm a Christian. I'm glad I'm a believer. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I have through Christ, through his shed blood, I have supernatural peace. It's indescribable. It's beyond our understanding how it happens. We have hope. We have health. We have everything that we need in life. Amen? We have the strength that when we feel like we cannot take another step, we cannot go another mile, God gives us strength through his Holy Spirit and we can go on. I don't know how many of you would say this, but I've been at times in my life where I felt like I couldn't go on, but God showed up and God stepped up and God caused me to raise up and look unto him. And he showed me that I can keep going because the blood has been applied to my life. Hallelujah. So you can bet your bottom dollar that God does make a difference between believers and non-believers. Amen. Let's look at Genesis real quick. Chapter 12 and verse number three. The the Lord told Abram this. He he said, I will bless those who bless you. Talking about a difference, discrimination. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. I'm glad I'm on the winning side. Amen. 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 And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For those who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they walk a different life. They live a different life. You have peace in your life that other people don't have. I'm not talking about peace that comes from the world. I'm talking about peace that comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. And I will tell you for a fact that the difference is found in his blood. Give him praise again if you would today. Now I want you to think about this. The blood that was applied to the doorposts, the blood that was present there, it changed the whole situation. Amen? It was the blood that made the difference. It wasn't there because, and I want you to get this, the blood wasn't there making a difference just because the people inside their homes were good. Uh, Y'all hang with me for just a minute. The blood was on the doorpost and applied to the doorpost and to that, that area of the home. The blood was there because they obeyed the instruction of the Lord, which brought about grace and mercy. Make a statement about that. Grace is when God gives you what you don't deserve. Mercy is when God doesn't give you what you do deserve. Y'all think about that when you go home today, amen? The blood on the doorpost didn't mean that they were, that everybody inside those homes was worthy, that they were perfect. The blood didn't mean that all the people in there were were. Uh, incredibly perfect individual. The doors on, uh, the blood on the doorpost was significant because it showed the Lord that they were Israelites. Amen? Amen. As a matter of fact, I want you to think about this. Many of those people inside those homes, 
They'd already been complaining and griping to Moses and Aaron. They're already doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. But do you realize that God passed them by anyway? The destroyer didn't go into their homes even though they weren't absolutely perfect within themselves. Can I tell you today that you're not going to make it to heaven because you're absolutely perfect in yourself. You will make it to heaven because the perfect Savior came and gave his life for you. Give him praise again if you will. If God would have waited for all of them to be perfect, none of them would escape, would have escaped. Amen? Well, let me tell you, God's not waiting. And let me say it. God's not waiting for all of us to be perfect either. He needs us to be forgiven. Amen? It is the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life that sanctifies you makes you perfect through Christ, not in and of yourselves, but through Christ. Amen. Do you realize that God delivered the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage and slavery, knowing that soon those same people would be worshiping a golden calf? The very people that he just delivered would soon be into idolatry. Isn't it amazing that when Jesus was here on earth, the the spotless, the perfect, the Son of God. Isn't it amazing that he had such a, let me use this word, unique group of guys around him? They were called disciples of the Lord. Peter, he was quite rambunctious. He was quite a corker, as some people would say, high-spirited. At times, I can look at Peter's life and I wonder, how in the world did he ever make a disciple? You know, I could look at James and John. What were they called? They were called sons of thunder. I don't know all about their lives. I have no idea exactly how they got that. I could speculate, but <laughs> they must have been dandies. Along with some of the others, amen? There was one occasion in particular where uh, the disciples were on their way to Jerusalem and, and they, they passed through a Samaritan village and they wouldn't let them stay there. The Samaritans wouldn't let them stay. And so James and John, they had this idea. You see it on the screen behind me. Here was their idea. Here's what they said to Jesus. Lord do you want us? This was faith, by the way. I got to say, it wasn't wisdom, but it was faith. Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just like Elijah did? I'm ready. Well, I want disciples like that on my side, I'll tell you right now, you know. Think about it. I, I mean, here again, sometimes, sometimes their attitudes weren't perfect. But as long as your heart is perfect through Christ, everything will be all right. Amen. But Jesus is there totally perfect, and he's walking around with some guys that they had some crazy stuff going on. Amen. Now, I want you to think about this. This is good. Jesus could have spent most of his time focusing on their attitudes, focusing on their mistakes, their mishaps in life, but he didn't. I find in Scripture that Jesus could have spent a lot of time focusing on their flaws, but instead he spent his time focusing on their future. Amen. I've come to share with somebody today that you don't have to worry if the blood of Jesus Christ is enough for you. You don't have to. Somebody listen. I, I just feel this in my spirit. You don't have to worry if the blood of Jesus Christ can take care of the sin that happened in your life somewhere in the past. You don't have to wonder if the blood of Jesus Christ is strong enough. Turn to your neighbor and punch him in the shoulder and say, that's good preaching whether you like it or not this morning. You don't have to get resaved every week. Did y'all catch that? You don't have to get resaved every week. You don't, you don't have to wonder if when the rapture takes place, 
if you're going to have to tiptoe a little bit to try to get a little head start, a little help, you don't have to wonder if you're going to have to jump a little bit. You don't have to wonder if you're going to have to go stand up on the hood of your car so you get a little closer to heaven. The blood of Jesus Christ is enough for you and it is enough for me. Give him praise this morning, if you will. Hallelujah. When it's your time to go to heaven, you're just going to go. Amen, somebody. <laughs> it's not going to be by works. It'll be by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 real quick. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8. The Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen. Amen. Not of works, lest any one of us in this building or watching online could boast about it. We can't be good enough. We can't do enough. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to ask you a question. There's going to come a day that we're all going to stand before Jesus Christ. We're going to stand before Almighty God one of these days. Now, I want you to think about that. When your day comes, place yourself there in your mind. When your day comes, will you meet Him with peace and with joy and with faith and a lot of, I'm sure, very strong uh, other emotions? Will you meet Him with those or you... Or will you meet him with some element of fear because you're just not sure that you're worthy to be there? You're not sure whether the blood was enough. I can tell you for a fact that according to Scripture, the blood of Jesus Christ is enough. I'm sure when we get there, every knee's going, I know that we're going to bow. I understand that. We're going to worship. But we don't have to think about getting to heaven and living in fear that the blood wasn't enough for us because the blood is enough for your sins and for my sins that we've committed in the past. They've been forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're not saved, today is the day of salvation. Amen. But if you have committed your life to him, the blood is enough. Now, I want to give you something to think about concerning the blood on the doorpost in Egypt. Since the blood was applied, the Lord said that the destroyer could not come into their house. Now, how severe does it have to be? Talking to us now. How severe does it have to be for the devil, for the Lord to tell the devil that he can cross the bloodline? How messed up does your life as a believer have to be for the Lord to tell the devil, you can go ahead and cross the bloodline? Can't happen. Can't happen. Amen. The devil cannot cross the bloodline of Jesus. You say, well, why do things happen to me sometimes? Things happen. Why do you get a flat tire? Because a nail sticks through the bottom of your tire when you roll over it. Why did I get COVID here a while back? Somebody breathed on me. I don't know which one of you it was, but <laughs> somebody breathed on me. If God didn't allow the destroyer into the homes in Egypt that were covered by the blood, what in the world makes you think that, that the Lord would ever allow the devil to cross the bloodline of your life? It cannot, will not, never, ever, ever happen. Amen. It can't happen. Have you stopped to think lately that the blood was the single method that God used to, look at this word, guarantee deliverance? It was the blood, amen? It was the blood that guaranteed deliverance, and it's the same thing today in your life. It is the blood that guarantees your deliverance, guarantees that you will one day be uh, in heaven with the Lord. 
I'm looking forward to that. We need to sing more songs about heaven, I think. We need to come up with some songs about heaven, Brother Rodney, because I'm looking forward to being there. Amen. I've already made up my mind. I'm just going to believe what the book says. I'm going to believe what the Spirit of God says to my heart. I've given my life to Jesus. I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. Amen. But I want you to think about this. Israel was safe, but they were not delivered. They hadn't come out of Egypt yet. Amen. They still had to be freed from, from Pharaoh's grip. The destroyer came through, but Pharaoh still had a grip on them. That's the truth. Amen. They still had to be delivered from uh, where they were. They still had to cross the Red Sea. They still had a wilderness to face. They still had giants in the land that were going to intimidate some of them. Y'all ever had any giants in the land? Amen. They still had walls at Jericho to face. They had enemies. But what, what the Bible teaches us, though, out of that is that before we can ever be successful against any obstacle or, or any enemy, we have to know for a fact that we are under the blood. That is the single thing you need to get settled in your life. I don't know what you're facing today or not facing, but I will tell you, you need to settle this in your life, settle this in your heart, that you are under the blood of Jesus Christ and His blood is enough to see you through. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Some of you in this building and, and uh, watching online, I think you can testify that the moment you got saved, y'all stay with me, and the moment that you were covered, when you got saved, the moment you were covered in Christ's blood, all of your troubles didn't vanish. How many of you still had troubles? Maybe one or three of us here today even still had a habit or two we hung on to. Yeah, it got real quiet in there. Real quiet today. Yes, moving right along. Yes, you are a Christian. You're a believer. You're a son or a daughter of the king. You've been accepted into the body of Christ. You have been forgiven. Judgment has definitely passed over you. Talking about believers today. But there may have been things that you did that you were feeling really bad about. We call it conviction. The good news is, it's wonderful that you were feeling really bad about it. That meant the Holy Spirit was tugging at your heart. Amen, somebody. It is a good thing when the Holy Spirit convicts you about something going on in your life and you know it's not right. And what you've got to do, you've got to lay that thing down. I'm not saying it's always easy. Sometimes it is. I would give a testimony. I won't call the name, though, because I didn't get permission. Uh, I could give the testimony of a man in this service right now that when he got saved, he cleaned his mouth up. Jesus Christ cleaned his filthy mouth up. Amen? Can I just go ahead and say it? God does want to clean us up. God does want to deliver us from our self-righteousness, from our filthiness. Y'all are not even listening to what I'm saying. How many of you today could testify with me that even though you're imperfect, you're still under the blood, covered completely? Amen? Amen. So this isn't, a, this isn't a message about being comfortable with sin. This is a message about knowing the power in the blood that is available to all of us and then living in that, walking in that because we are children of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Write this down if you have a pencil this morning. Final thing. The blood still works. No matter how you feel good friend of mine, he says this. He says, you can't always go by your feelers. You can't always go by your feelings. Thank you, Brother Kenneth, for sharing that word of wisdom with us. You can't always go by the way you feel. Now, I'm glad we've got feelings. Amen? How many of you like feelings? Amen? But I sometimes wonder, 
How many believers have really learned how to rest in the security of being a child of God covered by the blood of His Son? How many people have learned to rest in that? Don't go to bed at night thinking, well, I hope I make it through the night. Because I'm not sure. Amen? As I thought about what that night in Egypt must have been like, I realized that with millions of people there, and we've talked about this extensively on Wednesday nights, but with millions of people there, I would be pretty sure that there could have been some that felt they knew what was fixing to happen. There could have been some that felt insecure. There were some, obviously, lots who felt secure. You think about that night, and you know what's fixing to happen. How many people believed in the blood? Do you believe in the blood? I believe in it, amen? So whether though they felt it or not, they were still, still saved from destruction. Whether they felt it or not, they were still covered by the blood. Whether they felt it or not, the destroyer was not allowed to come into their homes. Whether they felt it or not, they were still going to be alive the next morning. Why? Because the blood had covered their lives. Amen. Give Jesus praise again, if you will. They were covered and protected by the blood. No one that night, talking about those who had the blood on the doorpost of their homes, no one, I want you to get this, those that had the blood applied, no one that night moved in and out of the safety of God. It all happened. They were safe. Nobody, nobody in those houses of the Israelites moved in and out of God's safety, of God's covering, whether they felt it or not. No matter how they felt, they were safe. They were still protected by the blood. Amen? How many of y'all ever go to a ball game, a kid's ball game? How many of y'all... How many of y'all, Mark Matichak, how many of y'all ever go to kids' ball games? How many of y'all have grandkids, you go to their ball games? How many times you see people doing stuff at ball games, adults doing stuff at ball games when the call doesn't go the way they thought it should have gone, and that was your little Johnny or your little Susie out there? Amen. Watch this. When the umpire... Yells, safe! Whether you like it or not, they're safe. The runner's safe. You can scream and holler. You can throw your hat. You can kick dirt on the umpire. You can spit tobacco on him. No, don't do that. Don't do that. But if it came out of the umpire's mouth that they were safe, they were safe, amen? When Jesus Christ saved you, when he touched your life with his blood, covered you with his blood, you are safe. Give him praise this morning. The child of God, you are safe, amen? I want, to, I want you to see one more thing, verse 23, chapter number 12. This is very interesting here. It says, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. Now, let's leave that up there for just a second, Sister Judy, if you would. God didn't say when you see the blood. He said, when I see the blood. Amen? It says, when he sees the blood. Are y'all with me? Even though you today, you can't, uh, unless you have a supernatural experience or just through faith, you can't see the blood applied to your life. But the Lord does. But the Lord does. Amen. 
I don't know about you, but it just makes me want to jump in my spirit when I think about what God has done for me, what Jesus Christ did for me when he forgave my sin and set me on a road to heaven. Amen. Stand with me today, if you would. I'm thankful for the covering. I'm thankful for the power that's found in the blood. Let me share a couple of things real quick as we close. Y'all know, everybody knows what it means when a preacher says he's closing. I try not to say it because it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> Until about the fifth close. We are not, if you're born again, we are not at the mercy of our enemies. Not the enemy of our soul. We're not at the mercy of anybody or anything. Amen? God has you covered. There is power in the blood. Things that happen in life and sometimes uh, you get struck with worry or with fear or with insecurity, whatever it is. You don't have to worry. You're covered. Tell somebody this morning, say, you're covered. Say, there's power in the blood. You've sung that song a few times, Sister Bonnie, over the years. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, God has you covered or the enemy would have taken you out a long time ago. How many of you still living here today? There's several of you. A few of you didn't, didn't breathe when I said that. God has you covered. The blood of Jesus Christ is enough. Is enough. Amen. You're still here. You're still going. You're still serving. God has something. He has something for you to do. Amen. Why are we still here? God must have something for us to do. Amen. If you're not finished, you're not done. As a matter of fact, I think we're just getting started on some stuff. Amen. I think we're just getting started. You're just beginning. And I'm glad Jesus is on my side. Amen. I'm glad I'm on the winning side. Can you give God praise today? He's worthy. The blood of Jesus Christ covers you. There is power in the blood today. If you would, bow your head with me. Father God, thank you for speaking to us today. I believe that you have spoken to lives, spoken to hearts. Lord, for some today, they just weren't real sure how secure they could be in the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I hope today that your Holy Spirit has spoken a word to them to let them know they're covered. They are covered. Lord, we don't have to get resaved every week. We don't have to God, go through life in fear that, that, Lord, something from the past will come back up. No, Lord, we're covered. So, Lord, we stand upon that word today. We trust in that word. We have faith in that word. We believe today, God, that you're enough. Jesus, if you came and gave your life as you did, if you came and gave your life in the manner that you did even, Lord, surely we can believe you are enough. Hallelujah. Speak that to our hearts, I pray, God, today. Speak that to our hearts that in you is found salvation. In you is found everything that we need to be known in heaven as a child of God. Our name's written down in the Lamb's book of life. With no one looking around, I just want to ask this question. Is there anyone here today I would say, Pastor, I need to be saved. I need my sins to be forgiven. I want to make things right with God today. Anyone that would slip up a hand and say, I want things to be right between me and God. And I see your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Is there anyone that would say, today I appreciate this message because I needed to know I needed to know. 
I've given my heart to the Lord, but I wasn't sure. Can I see your hand? That I needed to know. Thank you for sharing the word today. Anybody? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I needed to know. Yeah, who else? Just who else? Yeah. I needed to know. I want us to pray a prayer together and pray for those here in the service and also those who are watching online today. I want you to understand, y'all look at me for just a minute if you would. I want y'all to understand that all those watching online, whether it's today or next month or next year or five years from now, God still moves upon their hearts. And you're as much a part of this body as, as we are. So I want us to pray I want us all to pray this together. Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses my sin, that washes me as I simply ask you to forgive me of my sin. So Lord, this day, I do ask that. I do commit my life to you. And Lord God, I thank you that the blood is enough. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to question it. But Lord, I trust today. Your word declares it. And my hope today is found in Christ. And I look forward to one day being in heaven with him. I give you thanks. I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Give God praise this morning.